What do you guys think we should put in the new basket? Besides yourselves. <laughs> Cat toys? Looks like they're ready to go. Today's video is all about thrifted baskets and I found a good bunch of them the last time I went junking and I paid just a couple dollars a piece for each of these wonderful, wonderful baskets. Baskets are really easy to find at the thrift stores and yard sales. So if you have a collection that you would like to give a makeover to, then sit tight and see what I do with this batch. And as a side note, if you pick up some baskets from the thrift store, it's a good idea to wash them with some Dawn dish soap before you use them in your own home. First up is my favorite basket out of the bunch. And it is my favorite because it's sort of a picnic style basket. It has a lid that will open. I think it might be actually called a bread basket and I'm not for certain about that, but when you open it up, there's also this little platform inside so that I think maybe you could carry a casserole or something in it. I think it's awesome. And I I'm not familiar with my basket brands, but I thought this was just a really, really nice basket. However, the bird houses don't match my decor, so I'm going to have to paint over them. And I'm using Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint I'm hand painting this basket because I think that with its weave, the brushed on paint is going to work better for this project. Some of the other baskets I will be spray painting just depending on what baskets I think is going to take the paint the best and what way. This is what she looked like after she was all dry from her painting. I did two coats on the top lid because I'm going to be doing some decoupaging on there and I needed all that paint underneath to definitely be covered up. I've just learned recently that when you're decoupaging, it's a thinner decoupage glue that's going to work better with the air bubbles and wrinkles and such. So I just watered down a little bit of Mod Podge to the consistency that I was just showing you and I'm using this decoupage paper that I got at a local store, which I will try to link for you down in the description box. I'm not sure of the brand name of this paper, but if I can find it, I will link it. Once I had the paper on there where I thought it was straight, then I pressed all around the edges to make an indentation where I would know where to cut to make the perfect shape for the top lid. Then just cut on the lines and the indentations that you made. Then I put a healthy amount of my watered down Mod Podge medium onto the lid. Then all you do is press the decoupage paper down onto the Mod Podge and you can press as you go like I'm doing here. And of course, smoothing out air bubbles as you go, or you can lay it all down at once and smooth out the air bubbles after you've gotten it all laid down, whichever you're more comfortable with, but I prefer to do it this way. The awesome thing about this quality decoupage paper is that the air bubbles really do smooth right out. Like I'm just pressing on them, the wrinkles are smoothing out, the air bubbles are smoothing out, and it really gives a professional look. And then I went back with a damp rag and I did a little wet distressing around the edges. It will cause the decoupage paper to peel and roll up and be worn looking around the edges, which is the look that I'm going for, but of course, you don't have to do this, it's only optional. I also did a little wet distressing on the top, taking away just little patches of the paper here and there to make it look worn on the top as well. Then seal it all in with another coat of the decoupage glue. 
My idea was to stack my newly decoupaged basket on top of this picnic basket that I picked up at a flea market, and it turns out they are the perfect pair. So here's a reminder what the basket looked like before, sort of a 90s looking style, and here's what it looks like now. Next is a style of basket that has recently been really, really popular with its chalkboard attached, but I'm not in love with the colors. I like light, bright, and airy, so I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to spray paint this one because it's a wicker basket. I think that the spray paint is going to be the way to go, and I'm using just a cheap can of white spray paint. I can't even remember where I bought this can from. It actually worked a lot better than I was expecting for a cheap can of paint. But first I'm going to remove the chalkboard tag before I take it outside to spray paint. And here we are back and painted. So now we need to decide what we're going to do to decorate it. And I think I will go ahead and use the chalkboard that was attached, but I'm going to update it. So the perfect thing to update this chalkboard tag, I think, is one of the seed packet IOD transfers that came with this bunch of transfers. I will link these transfers in my description box below. They are phenomenal. <laughs> You're going to just love these transfers. They're so cute and easy to use. But for now, I had to pick which one I wanted to go inside my chalkboard tag. After you've picked which transfer you want to use, just carefully cut it out and don't cut off any parts of the surrounding transfers because some of the little leaves and things can sort of intermingle. Then I painted up my chalkboard tag using some white chalk paint and I painted the whole thing except for the back because the back is going to be attached to the basket and you won't see it. I wanted the background of the little tag to be white for the transfer, but I wanted the frame to be another color. So I chose the Waverly chalk paint in the color celery and I painted the frame part. I'm sorry, I got a little out of frame here. I get so excited when I'm using these transfers that I forget to double check things, but it's so simple. Pull the white backing off, lay it down, and then use the little tool that they supply you and just rub that transfer right down where you want it. Then peel the top plastic piece off and admire the pretty, pretty cuteness. To attach it to the basket, it's going to go back on pretty much the way that it was when I bought the basket. I'm going to have to attach some jute string to the back, so I just used hot glue to put the jute string two pieces on the back of the tag, and then I tied it back to the basket. And remember what this old dated basket looks like before. And here it is now. I thought it would be really cute done up like a garden basket. Here is another wicker basket. This one has a liner and it was sort of the perfect size I thought to make a door hanger out of it. 
but this time I'm not going to paint it white. I'm going to do something fun and bold if I'm going to make a door hanger. And so I decided I would paint it this really pretty aqua blue color. But before I do the aqua blue, I'm going to spray paint it with some of that white spray paint first so that maybe the blue will be brighter on the brown when it's all said and done. Here's baby blue all <laughs> painted up and back inside and now it's time to decorate and I'm going to use a thrifted belt I got for practically nothing. It was a quarter or less at the thrift store and it was the perfect size and I thought the cutest thing to just center around the middle of this basket for a decoration. And a bonus, I cinched it so tight that there was no need for hot gluing. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But I did hot glue down the flappy end piece of the belt. Now to fill the basket, and I'm using every last little piece of styrofoam that I have. <laughs> and yeah, this is a menagerie in this basket of styrofoam. But, you know, I like to use what I have. So now I'm going to fill it up with all the little white flowers that I have in my stash. Here's what this little basket looked like before, if you'll remember. And here's baby blue now. This next basket is my second favorite sort of basket out of this bunch. And the price tag was still on this one, $2.50. But this basket had the compartments. And oh man, does that make me so happy. Because I immediately thought I wanted to turn this into a picnic basket type thing to hold your silverware and plates. Because it's another wicker style basket, I will be taking this one outside and spray painting. And voila, here it is, all painted. Wasn't that fast? Actually, it really is fast drying paint. It really didn't take but 20 minutes, probably, for this paint to dry, and it's two coats. Like I said, this basket has the compartments that I want to put the plates and the silverware, so it's, it's making me think outdoor dining or, you know, take along on a picnic. So I decided I would use these little scrabble tiles that you can get at the Dollar Tree. You'll need two packs if you're going to recreate this. And we're going to spell out let's eat for the tile that will have the apostrophe i just used an x and turned it over and i drew an apostrophe with my black paint pen so my idea was to attach these scrabble tiles to the basket using a string so i had to attach the string to the tiles so i turned all the tiles upside down and i put a dot of hot glue on the back of each one and then i used some baker's twine for my string Just remember, when you turn them over, they're going to be backwards. So think it through. <laughs> Make it go eat, let's, and spelled backwards too. Then to make sure the string was definitely attached to the tiles, I put a dot of hot glue back over the top. Then when the glue is all dry, you have a Scrabble tile banner. And since this is a wicker basket, it was easy to thread the baker's twine through the little wicker and tie it up to the basket. I was a little bummed that the tiles kind of wanted to fall forward, so I wound up having to use some hot glue to help. And the hot glue fixed it right up. Remember our plain Jane basket before? And here she is now, all suited up to go outside and do some dining. A 
Okay, so what is the first thing that you think when you see a basket like this? First of all, it's a pretty basket, no doubt, but what would be your first inclination on something to do with it? Do you think to use it for a light fixture? Because that's the first thing I thought of when I saw this basket. If you had a light, a hanging light like this one in my kitchen, of course, I don't want to replace my kitchen light. I love my kitchen light. But if you have a hanging light or if you buy one of the light fixture, hanging light fixture kits, you could just string a bulb right down through the center of this. You wouldn't even have to do a thing but install the light. But since I actually like my kitchen light, I'm going to do something else with this basket. So I have this kind of large crochet piece that I got at the antique store. I love it so much. I'm not gonna cut it. I'm not gonna destroy it, don't worry. All I'm gonna do is drape it over this basket and I'm not gonna glue it or attach it in any sort of way. Just drape it right over and then I'm gonna tuck it down inside and just wait till you see the cuteness. After I got it all tucked and pleated looking nice, then I took an old cereal bowl, I put down inside, and that's going to serve as a riser for this faux plant that I have. And it's a really nice little faux plant. I think it actually came from Target, but it's a small thing, but I'm gonna turn it into a nice bigger arrangement with this basket. Here's our basket before. And here it is after. I have to admit that I really like the color of these sorts of baskets just the way they are. And if I can find more of them, I think I'm going to collect more of them and leave them this color and put them at the top of my cabinets along with my glassware. But for the purpose of this video and because I wanna make some transformations, I'm going to paint this basket. And this time I'm going to go back to the chalk paint with a brush because I think it'll just work out better that way. And here it is all painted and dry. And I wanna give you a couple of options if you have a basket like this. First of all, I thought it'd be cute just to put some sort of a placemat or something inside and it could hold some plates. Or you could make it a hanging basket like I'm going to do and I'm gonna use some macrame cord to do it. The first step is to make three long braids and you'll want to make it the whatever length you want your basket to hang. After you have your three braids finished, then you'll need to figure out the placement. So you'll want them to be spaced equally apart. I didn't measure anything like that. I just eyeballed it, but space them apart pretty equally around your basket and use some tape to hold them temporarily in place. Then I used a heavy duty stapler to secure them all in place. Then you can remove the tape. To hold my braids in place, I'm using a book ring from the Dollar Tree and I just looped them over the book ring and then I tied them together with another piece of cord. Then I used my cat hairbrush to brush out the macrame cord to make that pretty fringe and I trimmed it up so it would be even. Here's a good look at that piece if it was a little hard to follow what I did. And here was the basket before. And here it is as a hanging basket.
Now let's look back at all of our thrifted baskets today. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more thrift flips, click the link that I provided for you right here, and I'll see you next time. Bye.